Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to put together an Ender 3 V2 uh, from start to finish. And this is also going to include the upgrades that I have made to the CR-10S Pro that have been awesome for that machine. Since the Ender 3 V2 is also created by Creality, it shares a lot of the same components. So the upgrades that worked on the CR-10S Pro uh, V2 will also work on this 3D printer. The only thing that I'm going to hold back on this one is the direct drive system. Uh, I don't really need two. The reason for getting that direct drive was to be able to print with uh, flexible filaments and, uh, and that's about it really. Uh, so for this kit I won't be printing any uh, flexible filaments but we will be adding the Micro Swiss all metal hot end uh, as well as upgrading the firmware adding a 50 watt heater and uh, a new probe so let me review the parts that we're gonna add uh, to the stock Ender 3 V2 and then we'll get into unboxing and putting it together so what we got here are some 3D printed uh, parts so these can be found on Thingiverse and I'll go ahead and I'll include all the links of all the upgrades that we're going to do to this one. Uh, this this particular upgrade I found that is very important because it shims the uh, Z stepper motor uh, to, to get it in the proper alignment with the rail. So this one for sure is good and then uh, this one holds the Z axis rod, the screw rod, uh, at the proper distance away from the guide rail. So again it is important, uh, these, these are important upgrades. Uh, another thing that we have here is this replaces the plastic uh, extruder tensioner. So we'll be replacing it with this one. This one's made out of uh, aluminum. We're also going to add the anti-backlash to keep uh, the gantry from sagging down when the stepper motors are turned off. Another thing we'll be adding is the Capricorn uh, tubing along with the stiffer bed springs. We'll also be adding the CR Touch from Creality. Again, the Micro Swiss all metal hot end kit. Fifty watt heater, a new uh, temperature probe, and then uh, some buck uh, buck converters. So let me pull this thing out here so you can see what this thing looks like. So this little thing is super tiny, and uh, what this is going to do for us is allow us to adjust the voltage coming out of the power supply and uh, my reason for adding these is to kind of tone down the fans a little bit uh, the, the fans that came with the CR-10S Pro were extremely loud and I had to upgrade those to some Noctua fans and really the only major difference with the Noctua fans is that they operate at a, at a little bit uh, slower speed and I figure that we can get the same type of result by just slowing down the factory fans slightly. Just enough to take the edge off because they are extremely loud. This uh, Ender 3 V2 does come with the silent stepper borders. So there's not going to be doing a bunch of high pitch whining as it's doing its movements. And that was uh, another reason why I decided to pick up this one versus just the standard Ender 3. You can pick up the uh, Ender 3 V2 currently on Amazon for about 279 bucks. Uh, taxes here in Texas is eight and a quarter percent. So for me, it was just over $300 for the printer itself. If you decide you want to do all the rest of the upgrades along with it, you add a, another hundred bucks. So for $400, uh, you get this this complete setup. I'll go ahead. I'll put all the links in the description. Those of you guys that are on the fence about 3D printing, have no experience with it. Uh, this will be a good guide for you to follow. I'm going to include everything. I'm not going to leave anything out. All the details will be in the description. 
and I'll do my best to go through each step in uh, in detail, but not uh, exhaustive detail. Guys, if you like the videos that I've been putting out, if you're new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. If you find it valuable, like this video, turn on your notification bell. That way you'll be alerted to new upcoming videos. Leave me some comments. I love the comments. Share it with your friends. All right, guys, let's get started. Doesn't look like there's really much to it. So it looks like the first the first part of the, uh, the thing that we need to do is to install the Z axis, a couple of uh, bolt holes on one side, and the other one looks like it has very few bolt holes. All right, guys. So it's got uh, it's got these two rails. So the cool thing about these printers is that they come with everything you need. So uh, you have the, the the really long screws are going to be for these these uh, side rails. It also brings the tools. And here's a little package of tools. Here's all your Allen keys and wrenches. So I'm just going to grab the appropriate Allen key. Right, so I'm going to show you here by the front. So you got those two holes right there and then the bolts go in from the back. And these, these are uh, drilled through, all the way through, and they're tapped on both sides. So it's not going to matter, I don't believe, which, which way this goes. So this one goes like this. And I'm just getting them started by hand before I take the tool tool. And then now this one goes like this with the uh, bottom screw, the short, uh, the short screw position facing down, so just just like this. And guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these a little bit loose. I'm not going to crank them all the way because I have a feeling we're going to need to wiggle them around a little bit to get the other parts on before everything gets snugged down. All right, let's see what's next. All right, so the instruction shows uh, installing the Z limit switch. I'm not going to be installing this because we're going to be putting the CR touch in and it, it's going to essentially replace the function of this piece. So I'm going to leave this out. So the next part is going to be the Z axis motor along with the Z-axis screw. And then for this, we're gonna need the shims. So I'll go ahead and turn the unit around so I can show you what we're gonna do here. All right, so here's, here's our uh, Z-axis motor. So here's the, one of the little parts that we 3D printed, and then this is the other. And this just simply goes with the protruding side facing down. So it fits right there within the grooves of the rail and then this one goes above it just like that I'm going to move you in close so you can see the reason why it has those grooves cut out right and then the Z stepper motor just simply goes right here just like this that's it so that that shims it so that it sits properly uh, in the right position. So I'm just gonna grab the screws for this. We'll go ahead and screw those down. It's gonna be these screws right here. All 
right? Since these are countersunk, that's why we need. So again, I'm just going to get them started, but I'm not going to crank them down because we still need to tighten up the uh, the side rails. All right, next up is going to be the, the Z rod. And again, we're going to grab our little 3D printed part. You can see there's nothing there's nothing to hold this this part this part up here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little thing here. And we'll just drop it. So there's a little a little guide to hold it. So you can see from the side the reason that that thing is important. So here we got just under two centimeters. So it's like right about here. And then we come back up to the top. We're also under two centimeters. So the spacing's perfect. Alright, so next thing we gotta do is uh, to set up the gantry. So before before I get into completely assembling the gantry, what we're going to do is we're going to install our little upgrade kit here. I'm going to do that real quick. This thing has a little wash, lock washer. And all it is is a little bearing. So a little bearing for the lock washer. We're going to reuse this screw. I'm going to take the screw out. Put it over here. We're going to also reuse the spring and then this little retainer. So we're also going to take this screw out of here too. Okay, so we got to pay attention because this one, this one was a countersunk screw. And then uh, the other two were, were these screws right here. So all we're doing is we're replacing the plastic part for the metal version. They, 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 they look exactly the same. Uh, so I would imagine those, all the same bolts will work. So here's the, the metal one. And you can see what it looks like. So the only thing it looks like we're going to lose is the wire holder. Because that one doesn't have a wire holder. I'm tightening them, not crazy tight. Tight so they don't come out with a little bit of vibration. Next thing is the arm. So the arm has a, a little insert, just like the uh, plastic one. And I think we can put the, let me see if we can put the bearing in now. Yeah, maybe. Now before I put this on, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the spring in with the little retainer. So the retainer goes like this. So it's, so it's going to be the, the screw. All right, so so this doesn't actually screw in; it just it just pushes on it. So you can see the the threaded part is right here, and this just this just pushes; it doesn't actually screw in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the screw on here. But I'm not going to let it go all the way in. Oh, so the original one had a pin here. This one has a place for a screw. So we gotta grab that screw out of this kit. So it's this this small screw right here. So this takes the place of this pin. Alright, so I just put the screw in but I didn't tighten it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the spring into place. And I'm gonna go ahead and just 
tighten this a little bit so that it goes inside of that, that thing there. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's one upgrade done. Well, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put this part back in. So this is the little PTFE tube holder. All right, another thing we want to do is uh, add the uh, anti-backlash. So here's the uh, anti-backlash. And I can already see that we're going to have a problem with this. So I'm going to have to... Looks like I'm going to have to grind this to match this. All right, guys, I'm going to go grind this. I'll be right back. All right, so we modified our little, little piece here. So now it's got a flat side, and it should uh, bolt up under here now. See that? I'll have to check the spacing here. It looks like the spacing is a little different, too. It might still work. Anyhow, I want to show you what, uh, guys why this is important to have this piece. Let me point the camera up here so you guys can see something. If you don't, if you're not going to use an uh, anti-backlash, what will happen, happen is this. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to put this on here so you can see. See what happens? See how the thing just scooted down like that? The way that this thing works is these two uh, lock together and there's a spring in between. So I'll go ahead and mount it up there so you guys can see what it, how it works. And the tension that is put uh, against these two because of the spring pushes up against the threads of the rod. And since, since it's putting tension on uh, opposite sides of the threads, this, this won't move. It stays uh, locked into place. So let me uh, put this on so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Kind of tricky to get it on here. So I'm going to start with the bottom first. See, so this, this will move, it'll still move up and down, but there's so much tension spreading spreading in between these threads that it won't roll down on its own. So that's the benefit of having this, uh, this little thing in here. Let me bring you up closer to see. So because of that tension that's put in between those two uh, cylinders, there's tension up against the... Uh, the threads so this this won't roll down on its own it has to the the screw can still turn and move the gantry up and down but it's not going to drop on its own so that's the reason that's the reason this this piece is important otherwise when it loses power the whole gantry will just sag okay so another thing that's uh that you're going to need when you're going to try to put this this thing on you can reuse the original screws uh but what you are going to need is a uh a nut to go on the end so I just I happen to have some spare nuts that go on the end of this and I'll find out the exact size of this nut and I'll link it in the description and uh, find a source for you because you are going to need this nut to uh, attach this anti-backlash uh, device because the original the original one came tapped right here you see how it's tapped so this this was the nut, but since we're not using this anymore, uh, it's it's no longer tapped. Yeah, if you look at this one, this one just has a hole. There's no tap thread there. All right, guys. So what I had to do is I took a rat tail file to uh, to these these spots right here to get these closer to the middle. So I widen those a little bit, 
closer to the middle. And then I also uh, ground off this, this spot here so that it can go just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in. And then uh, we'll start building the gantry. So this thing had two lock washers. It had one lock washer before the screw went into the little brass fitting and then one after. I'm going to try to do the same thing. Hopefully I have enough material left over to tighten it. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to lose these lock washers on this side and just only have one on one side. Guys, so there it is. I just got to put the rest of the gantry together. So let's look at what's next here. All right, so what they're showing is um, bolt the gantry to the. Okay, so there's two bolts here. All right, let me figure out how this thing goes. Oh, I see, I gotta hook up the belt too. All right, so we need the, uh, the X access profile. That's the bar that, uh, that goes across. And then the belt. Let me grab those parts and uh, we'll put it together. All right, guys, so there's, there's two of these smaller, um, rails here and the one that's got the two big bolt holes on each side that's the one that goes along the top so we're going to save that one we're not going to need that one right now the one that we're going to be working with is is the other one so this one has a series of holes uh, along the sides here all right guys so the screws that we're going to use for this uh, are these ones that come with these these locks on them and it looks like they give you an extra one so I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up so this is what they look like right here and we'll verify by seeing if they'll uh, screw into these threaded areas here and they do perfect all right so this goes like this so the reason that this is notched out like that so it goes like that. And so I think what I'm going to do is just hold this with my finger, get this thing on here, and see if I can start threading it, maybe. Okay, it looks like I got it. All right, before I tighten it down all the way, I'm going to start the other one. These are a little bit tricky to get in because they didn't make the hole big enough for the whole screw to fit in with the Allen key. All right, that's good and solid there. I think the next thing we got to do is thread the belt on. Here's our little timing belt. So we just got to fish it under here. Let's see if we can push it under here. All right, so it has to go like this. All right, see it? And then the belt goes in the grooves of the channel. So now what we got to do is, is get the, uh, the tensioner part on. So I'm going to grab this, uh, this bracket here. And it gets screws from this side, so it's the other two uh, leftover screws. This goes in like this. All 
I just want to tighten them, but I'm not cranking on them crazy. Because they do have lock washers. Yeah, so that's not moving at all. All right, now, now we can put this, this end cap back on. All right, so another problem here. Let me just screw out here. All right, now I think we got it. Okay, so now it looks like we got our our gantry all assembled. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slip it on there. Put this. I'm gonna put this screw in here on the end, and then slip it on the on the vertical rods. At this stage, the next thing is gonna to be to uh, to put the gantry on. Now, the instructions tell you to mount the, the hot end on here, but I, I'm gonna make some changes to the hot end, so I'm gonna put it on last. Uh, but to put the gantry on, the what I found that you have to do first is, if you look carefully at these nuts, they're, uh, they're like offset. So you have to set them to where, I don't know if you can see that, that that nut is offset. So you want to have the most, uh, the bigger part of the nut so that the, the shaft is more to the left. So you can see the, the, the part that rides up and down where the bolt is, is more to this side, to the left side than to the right side. That's how you want it because you want these wheels as spread apart as possible so they'll go over those rails. Same thing on this side. So if you look on this side, you have the same thing. So you notice the shaft runs up and down here, or the, the bolt runs up and down here, and you have more of the concentric nut on this side than you do on that side. That's how you want it. That would, that would spread these legs, this wheel, furthest from this side. Same thing on the other side, all right? So now what I'm going to do is just place it on top, but remember we have this locking locking device, so I'm going to have to uh, start to thread that on first, then put the spring on, and then hopefully we'll be able to get all this thing on there. And so what I had to do is start it uh, without it being attached to the side rails. And it's, it's tricky to get this thing on here, but once it's on there, it, it won't move. Alright, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start tightening this, this collar down here. I'm going to tighten the rails down first. Next thing is the, the top rail. I'm going to put the top rail on. And this one uses these screws right here. So those are the ones that you need. So the, the bottom one, use this really long screw. They're the same diameter, but this was the bottom one because it had to go through all that rail. But this one doesn't have to go through all that rail. Again, tight, but not crazy tight. There's a couple of end caps. Uh, last thing would be to uh, install the display. That's just plugging it in. And then the spool holder on the top. A little uh, knob for the extruder but before I do that I'm gonna take apart the the hot end 
and replace that for the micro Swiss along with the heater element. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll finish, uh, finish up the rest of it and flash the firmware. So this is real important. Let me show you this. I just noticed it. So if you look down here, it's currently switched to 230 volts. So we got to switch that to uh, to 115 because we're in the U.S. At least I'm in the U.S. So I'm switching mine. So there it is, 115. So don't forget to do this because it it came uh, set to 230 by default. So I'm glad I noticed that. Next thing we're going to work on is the hot end. And I was looking at this heater cartridge and noticed that it's not going to reach all the way to the uh, power supply. So when I add this in here, it's uh, it's going to be just, just short of getting inside the, the power supply, I believe. I'm going to have to double check it, but it looks like it's going to be a little short. So what I'm probably going to do is um, cut the original one somewhere back in here. So I'll, uh, I'll pull this, this sleeve back. And then, uh, so the plan is to pull this sleeve back and then cut the two heater cables, like right around here. I'll go ahead and attach the the new heater cartridge and then heat shrink the connections so I'll solder and then heat shrink them but first let's start by taking this thing apart and uh, this thing is actually pretty cool the when you look at it in the picture it looks really small but it's, it's not that small uh, it's got a uh, the main fan here to blow on the on the heat sink and then you got the parts cooling fan on the side, it's got a nice little duct here. It's a nice little compact system. Alright guys, so the mistake that I made here is that you can't take this screw out. You gotta leave that screw in there. Um, so I'm gonna show you. It's got a it's got this clip right here. And that clip won't come out. You have to push the clip down and then work this thing sideways till it till it comes out like this all right so uh anyway that's it so i'm going to cut this wire tie off Also going to cut these other wire ties off as well. All right, so like I said, we're going to be replacing the the heater cartridge along with the hot end. So I'm going to go ahead and take the the hot end off now. It's got a little silicone sock that you take off. And then you got to be careful with these. You don't want to bend these wires around too much. But you got a Phillips screwdriver over here that just holds this in just tight enough to keep it from backing out. Uh, but you don't want to over tighten this screw when you put it uh, back on. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off real quick. So this is the little grub screw that holds the heater. Right, so on this, we just got to take this little clip out of here, and then uh, I'm not going to reuse this tube, but I need the tube to get the size for the other tube that we're going to replace it with. So I'm just going to, so to release these, you just push down on this collar here, and then the, the the tube will come out. And the reason that we're replacing this is it, if you see, turn the light on so you guys can see. I don't know if that's any better. It's hard to tell. Anyway, if you look real close, that's that's where this 
fitting grabs the tube. And if you look in there, see where the little teeth are? They're not that far down. Which means that this tube was all the way down in, 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 into the heater block. So yeah, about right there. So that's how far down it goes into this. And the problem with <clears throat> using this the way it is, is that over time, this tube will will start to... And what's interesting is that this, this tube wasn't even cut straight. So if you look at this, this tube wasn't even cut straight. So this would have given me problems shortly after starting uh, starting to print because the material, the filament, is melting within this area as it's entering the, the, the nozzle tip. Right, so you can see. So this thing is cut offset. It would have started leaking in between here and the and the tip. And then once it starts to leak in between there, it, it creates a, a clog. And then your filament doesn't extrude out of there. So the reason that I'm replacing this with the all-metal hot end is the all-metal hot end is machined only for the size of the filament all the way through the heat sink. And, and then there is a piece of titanium that's in the middle that's a heat break. And it keeps the heat from creeping up into the, into the heat sink. And the heat sink has a fan blowing on it anyway. So the the only place where the filament melts is actually at the tip where where the heater block is. So it doesn't it doesn't go past the heat break uh and then any heat that radiates from here or the heat break gets immediately cooled by the heat sink. So anyway, it's a great setup uh and the, and the tube only enters the heat sink up to about here. So you don't have this problem of having a crooked cut or the tube melting inside the hot end over time because this this tube will melt inside the hot end over time and then cause uh, cause problems and that's one of the benefits of replacing the tube with the capricorn is that it's more resistant to the heat and it has a slicker interior and tighter tolerances but the drawback is if you use the capricorn tube with the stock hot end is it still has to fit all the way down here uh, near the the heater block so the all metal hot end doesn't have that problem so i'm going to go ahead and pull this thing off i'll open up the micro switch so you guys can look at the all metal hot end and then we'll we'll install it okay so here's the micro switch kit we've got our little machined heat sink with a thermal brake Here's our here's our titanium part. And then you can see how they machine that in there. And this is just big enough. This hole is just big enough for the filament. Let me grab a piece of filament and I'll show you. So here's the here's the filament. And see how tight that tolerance is? So the filament. So right, right here, this first little step right there, that's where the tube would end. And then the filament goes down this uh, machined part and pokes right through there. You see that? See how tight that tolerance is? And then you got the heat break, which is right here. And the way the heat break goes into this, into this space is with such precision that there's really no way that it can leak because this surface mates perfectly with this little nipple that sticks out here. So these two fit real good. Put the little screw in there. And this little guy comes right out, right into the hot end or into the heater block where the hot end is. Anyway, that's the, that's the beauty of this setup as opposed to the, uh, the other one. So I'm just going to start it by hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on this 
to make sure that it's that it's square as I'm tightening it up and I'm gonna give it a little tighten I'm not gonna get crazy but just tighten it a little bit okay, so this little this little grub screw that comes with the kit that's to hold the heat break to the heat sink so I'm gonna go ahead and I just want to just get it going. And here's another cool thing too. So there's there's two two grub screws that hold this cartridge in here. And if you look at the original one, the original one is just the the one grub screw. And they don't they don't cut a, a slot in between to really grip that uh, that heater properly. Anyway, they uh, they spend their, their extra time to make sure that they get it right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take this off just so I can show you guys where the Bowden tube winds up in in this setup. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and. I'm gonna put this put this down in here so you can see. So this is the original Bowden tube. Okay, so that's all the way down. I'm gonna take this off so you can see in here what the difference is. See the Bowden tube right there. So that that's the problem with this setup, is that you're relying on the on the pressure between the Bowden tube and this tip to provide the seal and if this Bowden tube is not cut just right and it's not pushing down on this with enough force uh, you, you, you have leaks and the only thing the only thing exerting pressure on this these two surfaces are these tiny little teeth in this retainer here and in my opinion this is totally ineffective and a cause for a lot of frustration at least it was for me when I started playing around with this I'm wondering why am I getting clogs why are my prints failing and it was all because of this this system here now there is a guy Chep he's got a uh, YouTube channel and he's got a great solution if you, if you guys don't want to switch out your existing hot end for an all-metal one on how to how to deal with this problem I'll leave a link to that video in the description that way uh, you guys can check it out because it, it, it'll save you a lot of headache if, if you if you understand how this works and why this this is not the, the the best setup for creating a seal so if you look here machine surface Another machine surface, precision fit. One fits inside the other. The grub screw gets screwed down. The heater block goes in. And the filament melts as soon as it enters the heater block with the tip. But it does not melt up in here. There's no tube. There's no place for it to leak. Uh, so th this, in my opinion, is a superior solution uh, for, for melting the filament inside the hot end and not have leaks ever since I switched out this part on my CR10S Pro V2 I haven't had any problems I haven't had any clogs I haven't had any problems so this is a great upgrade here if, if you can do any upgrade this one would be the one all right so to put this this part on the the heater block is gonna face so if you're looking at it if you look gonna look at this from the front the heater block would face with these the heater opening and the temperature probe on the side would be on the side. So this this thing then screws in like this. Okay, so I'm just tightening this up a little bit. All right, next thing is to install the heat break with the heater block onto the heat sink. And then you want to make sure that you have the 
opening for the heater block without the screw side on the left side. And the right side is the one that has the screws. So just like this. And if you notice, this is how it goes. Just like that. And then I'm just going to tighten the grub screw just enough to hold it together. Because we have to preheat this to, to give it the final tighten, tightening. So that's good there. So the next thing is going to be to install the new heater probe. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure it fits in there. Yep, yeah, okay. And the plan here is to fish it through that wire loom that the Ender 3 came with halfway down and then cut the original one and then solder and heat shrink the connection. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, the, the tip also on here. So you see, unlike the Bowden tube, this tip is going to meet up with that titanium heat break. So those are two precision machine surfaces similar to a cylinder head on an engine block. See? Just like that. Now when we tighten them, it'll uh, it'll seal up that space real, real good. All right, what's cool about this tube, this uh, this wire loom, is that you can you can pull it back like this, and as it gets bigger, it gets easier to to, to pass the cable. So I'm gonna probably get it as far back as I can. All this was tape. I would have to work on these cables. All right, so I'm gonna have to separate these two. All right, guys, so I removed this yellow tape here that was holding these two parts together. One is the heater, and the other one is the temperature probe. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back over here and just cut it. I'm going to strip this back right here, and then... Put a piece of heat shrink over it and then solder it to the other 50 watt heating element.
it's important to use one of these these type of cutters. Uh, I have picked up a another kit for my CR10S Pro, and it came with with this cutter. Uh, but this particular Capricorn tube set did not come with it, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this to cut it. And it's not really so critical for this particular hot end as it is for the 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 stock one because of the way that it it has to uh, attach. So the original one went in about that far uh, from where the little grips grabbed it. This one doesn't have to go in so far, so I'm going to cut mine. I'm going to cut this one right around here. And this thing just is real, real nice. Cuts it nice and flat. Next up is installing the CR Touch from Creality. So in the box we got the CR Touch probe itself and a few brackets. So this is one bracket. And here's the probe. It's a nice looking unit. And what I like is it has a metal uh, tip on it. So you got the small side of the connector. It's the second and third bracket. You got a ribbon cable. And so the ribbon cable's got two sides on it, small plug and a big plug. So what I'm doing here is just uh, gathering up this wire protector, and as you as you push it together, uh, it, it gets wider and it'll allow you to to feed cables through it. So I'm just gonna fish this through. It only takes a minute to do. And uh, on the board. There's this connector right here on the right side next to this colorful ribbon cable. You also need to remove this, this uh, Z limit switch. We're not going to need that anymore because the CR touch is going to take over that function. Simply plug it in right here. And uh, pretty much that's it. Next thing we're going to do is remove this Z switch cable. Take this screw out from underneath the build plate. You can shift the build plate uh, all the way to the back to get access to it. Once you loosen that cover, you can just wiggle that Z limit switch wire out of there and refasten the cover. So, and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm mounting the bracket. So one of these three brackets that's included with the kit will fit here. Once the bracket's on, then just install the probe. Now, I had to use a rat tail file on this shroud. I didn't want the wire coming out from the top. Uh, I thought that looked a little bit messy, so I was looking to make it a little bit neater. So I just cut a little notch out on the side of the plastic cover. Now what we're going to be doing is mounting the extruder and plugging in the cables from the motherboard and power supply to the to the gantry stepper motors. So you got three plugs here, they're all labeled. You got an X for the X axis, you got an E for the extruder, and then you have an X with two wires 
that is for the X axis limit switch. So we're going to plug in the X stepper motor first, the X limit switch next. You might need a screwdriver to push that in. And finally, the extruder cable. Route your hot end assembly uh, from the back. Make sure your wires are positioned correctly. Tighten up the wheel. That's the timing belt to the hot end bracket. Tighten it up. Preheat the hot end to 230 degrees. Get a torque wrench. Set it to 30 inch pounds. And tighten up your hot end. So the idea here is to uh, press that nozzle tip to the thermal heat break and just uh, install your cover. Tidy up your Bowden tube and uh, wires using the provided wire ties. What we're going to be doing here now is uh, replacing the springs. So just back out the wheels, take the springs out one at a time, and put in your new springs. The, the, the back left is a little tricky because there's a plastic retainer there to keep the wires from uh, getting messed up, so you need to be careful removing that. Then put your spring in, and put that, uh, that wire support back together. Reinstall your wheels, and uh, I like to uh, tighten up the wheels to where the end of the nut is just showing on the bottom. Uh, what we're going to be doing next is uh, tidying up some of these cables, so we're going to pull the slack back from the gantry stepper motors over to the motherboard. There's a little metal plate underneath here with a hole in it, so we're just going to take a wire tie, stick that in there, and fasten that down. So what I did here is I put a piece of uh, duct tape in here. This has a bunch of sharp edges. I was worried that it would cut into, into some of this wire, so I have some duct tape in there. That should protect the wires a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is button up the bottom of it. We'll start it up and check it to make sure that everything is working. To reinstall this is pretty simple. It's just a few screws. We got one here. This is the longer one. And then a couple of short ones uh, along these, this edge over here and down at the bottom. Uh, these screws have a, a lock washer. You can see the little markings on the metal from the lock washer. So we're going to have to reinsert those and then there is another screw that comes in from the top that grabs this this uh, little bent piece of metal here so let me go ahead and put you guys on the tripod we'll button that up Uh, this is the next thing that we're going to install. This just goes on the side here. This is a real nice uh, bed. It's totally glass on uh, 
flat glass on one side. And then this is also glass, but it has a textured surface on it. I'm going to use it like this as a test, see how it does. Or I'm going to use instead of those clips, I'm going to use a couple of these things. They're easier to get on and off. Alright guys, so just like before, we got to get the uh, Z offset for the for the probe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement. So I got my calipers here. Alright, so I'm getting, it's looking like 47 to me. So I'm going to set it to 47, negative 47. Let's go in here, probe offset. X is negative uh, 47, and then the Y, we got to turn it sideways, it looks to me like 7, so I'm going to set this to negative 7. In this step we're going to flash our firmware. Now, the Ender 3 V2 requires two flashes, one for the motherboard and the other one for the display. Uh, we're going to start off with the motherboard flash. Open up your file explorer and first step that we need to do is we're going to format the SD card in FAT32 with 4096 bytes allocation. Right click on your SD card, click format, make sure that those settings are correct, click start, click OK. And you're done. Next thing we're going to do is go back to our, our files. And we're going to copy the E3 V2 CR and BL Touch 4.2.2 Gyres UI file to the SD card. So I got them here on my desktop. I'm just going to right click on it and send it to drive M. And then just double check, make sure it's there. All right. Now we're going to head over to the 3D printer and flash the file to the printer. Take your SD card with your flash file on it. Make sure that it's labeled down. Insert it in your 3D printer. And then switch it on. It will automatically take the update. And once it's complete, you'll see the menu on the display screen. That's it. Uh, I've already flashed the display, but I'll flash the display again, show you guys how to do it. Now in this step, we're going to flash the display. So we're going to reformat the SD card again. the SD card, right click on your SD card, click format, make sure everything is set like before, click start, yes, and then we're going to take our, our files from the desktop, and we're going to right click on the dwin underscore set folder, and send it to the SD card. Just check, double check your SD card, make sure it's in there. And if you want to double click on the folder, it's going to have a few files in there. Okay, so uh, let's eject the SD card. 
And now let's head over to the printer and flash the display. What we're going to do in this step is take your display and unplug it. And we're going to insert the SD card that we just put our flash file on. All right, so we're going to insert it in there and then it pushes, pushes in and clicks. And that's it. So now we're going to plug it back in. And switch on our printer. Display will go blue, and when it's done flashing, it'll go orange. So that's it. All you gotta do at this point now is switch off the printer again. Take the SD card out of the display. turn your printer back on and double check and make sure that everything looks okay so there you go all right and now uh, in this firmware there's a bunch of advanced settings so we have uh, Z offset Get you guys in close so you can see. Let me, let me adjust the screen here a little bit. Oh, another thing too, guys, is that uh, uh, this firmware, it, it'll allow temperatures up to 300 degrees, okay? But uh, you got to make sure that your machine is set up for that. You need a special thermistor, and you also need a special heater. Uh, without those, those two things, uh, you're, you're not going to get the temperature. And if you try to turn it up to 300 degrees, with the stock thermistor, what will happen is uh, it, you'll melt it because it's, uh, the plastic can't handle that heat. They make a special thermistor that uh, has a metal tip on it that screws into where the set screw is for the factory thermistor. Uh, so you got to make sure you have that before you try to use this feature. But, but I'll show you that you can do it. So you go over here to hot end and just start. Cranking it up. There you go. Uh, there's some advanced settings in here. So you go down to advanced settings. Click on it. And then where you go to uh, probe. You can set the offsets on the probe. Now, I have the offset set to the CR Touch. If you buy that kit for your Ender 3 V2, it'll come with a bracket. And once you mount it on that bracket, these are going to be the offsets. So it's negative 47 on the X and then uh, negative 7 on the Y. And I'll show you guys how I how the uh, bed leveling works. And since, uh, since this is new, we're going to create a mesh. So I'm going to click on create new mesh. And the printer is going to run through its bed leveling routine. Okay, now 
what's really cool is you can also uh, look at the mesh. You can go over here to Mesh Viewer. I want to look at the valleys and I also want to look at the, the graphic. So there's, there's the graphic. Shows you all the measurements. Another thing you can do too is uh, you can play with the with the, with the speed. Not the controls, motion, yeah. So you can play with the speed too. Go to max speed. I got it set at 700. Uh, probably turn up even more. Yeah. I'm not sure how high it'll go, but there's a lot of different things you can play around with to speed things up. Anyway, it's got a uh, ton of settings, probably more settings than, than I know what to do with. But it's pretty cool that this is available with, uh, with just doing a flash.